feel like you're living in an information bubble of someone else's design? Do you ever suspect that your worldview and opinions have been targeted for manipulation by powerful government agencies, trillion dollar corporations, and subterranean supercomputers? Okay, it sounds like a paranoid conspiracy theory, I know. The thing is, according to Mark Zuckerberg, it's at least partially true. In a letter to the House Judiciary Committee, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg says he has regrets about bowing to pressure from the Biden White House to censor content related to COVID-19. Apparently, the government wanted to control what people read, thought, and even laughed about. Zuckerberg wrote in part that senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our team for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire, and expressed a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree. I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it." End quote. This censorship allegedly happened in 2021, when millions of Americans were still considering whether or not to get vaccinated, and when erroneous theories, but also some valid skepticism and valid questions, were spreading like wildfire on social media. A time when many people were stuck at home, thanks to government-imposed lockdowns, relying on platforms like Facebook for their news about COVID. It all led to this stark accusation from President Biden. What's your message to platforms like Facebook? They're killing people. I mean, it really, they really, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. And, that, and, they're, and they're killing people. Now, in a statement to News Nation, the White House responded to Zuckerberg's letter by saying, quote, when confronted with a deadly pandemic, this administration encouraged responsible actions to protect public health and safety. Our position has been clear and consistent. We believe tech companies and other private actors should take into account the effects their actions have on the American people while making independent choices about the information they present. There's the S word, safety. Remember, that's the typical justification for government overreach. While it's encouraging to know that the tech overlord, Mark Zuckerberg, has had a road to Damascus moment regarding free speech, it's worth noting that he did express a very different opinion to Congress four years ago. Uh, I, I believe s strongly in free expression, but I do think that like all equities, um, it needs to, it, it is balanced against other equities like safety and privacy. And even the people who believe in the strongest possible interpretation of the First Amendment um, still believe that there should be some limits on speech when it could cause imminent risk of physical harm. All right, quite an about face. Joining us now to talk about the implications, conservative commentator and host of the Death of Journalism podcast, John Ziegler. John, great to have you on. Got to get your reaction for about this letter from Mark Zuckerberg. Are you surprised? I was a little bit surprised. It was great to see some level of accountability for what has been a shameful chapter in the history of U.S. media. I loved your commentary there, Elizabeth. I would just add a couple of things. What President Biden said there was not factually accurate. And we had a pretty good idea of that at the time. But th so this was even more outrageous. This was not misinformation that the White House was trying to censor through Facebook. These were legitimate contrarian opinions, many of which turned out to be right when it came to the issue of mask mandates and vaccine mandates, which were incredibly un-American and anti-freedom. And as a conservative, I'm outraged by all of this, especially since the Democratic Party is pretending that it's the party of freedom in this 2024 election. Mark Zuckerberg has proven that that's not the case, and he deserves a lot of kudos for that. So what are we suffering from a little bit of the armchair quarterback syndrome here? Like, we now know that that censored speech, these valid questions about, you know, mandates and, and the vaccine were valid. But we didn't know it then, and it was a global pandemic, and the you know government was trying to get people vaccinated. In other words, like we now know that the Hunter laptop is real. At the point when it emerged, the FBI, under President Trump, by the way, said 
we think it might be Russian misinformation. And so Mark Zuckerberg said, I now regret burying the laptop story. In other words, we now have the benefit of of hindsight, of knowing that, in fact, they were right back then, but we didn't know it at that point. I would say two things. I think we knew it much sooner than the White House and the media has admitted to. But more importantly, we live in a country where free speech is supposed to be the bedrock of our society. It's the First Amendment. and have the, to have Even the federal speech that's government wrong or inaccurate. But a hundred percent, because who gets to decide who, what's inaccurate? And we saw here that sometimes contrarian speech can actually be very accurate. And sometimes the conventional wisdom can be wrong. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.